Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, we have seen the introductory session on the data streams. Now, in this video, we will be seeing data stream management system, a very important concept when it comes to big data. First, we will have a look at the difference between the DBMS and DSMS. DBMS stands for database management system, which is a normal database and DSMS which is data stream management system which we are going to look in detail in this particular video. So the first difference is that DBMS deals with persistent data which means it deals with static data which is not going to increase continuously with time. Whereas DSMS deals with streaming data which increases continuously with time and which has an infinite rate of growth. In DBMS, if we look, the data access can be random. That means we can access any of the elements or any of the records in a random fashion easily, which may not be sequential. But in DSMS, we have to access the data in sequential order. No doubt we can access the random data also, but it will be very much expensive to do that. Hence, generally the data access is sequential in DSMS. Now, the next difference is that whenever we fire a query in DBMS, we get the exact answer which is expected for that particular query. Now this is because the database is limited here and we can traverse through entire database as it is static. But when it comes to DSMS, whenever we fire a query, we always will get approximate answer. Now this is because the volume is huge and it is increasing continuously. So it is very much difficult to store the entire data. Rather, we can store the knowledge or the summary of the data, which may give you the approximate answer for any query that is fired in future. So I hope this difference is clear. Now the next difference is that in DBMS, it uses unbounded disk store. Because here the data is static and when it comes to DSMS, it uses bounded main memory for performing real time and fast calculations or performing aggregate operations on the entire streaming data. Next difference is that the queries are one time queries, which means whenever we fire a query in DBMS, we fire one single query and we get one single output for that. Further, that particular query will not be taken forward and output will not be generated for that. So it's like whenever you fire a query, one time the output will be generated, but it's not like that in DSMS. In DSMS, it is possible to have continuous queries. That means once we declare the query, we will get continuous output for that particular streaming data. Like the data stream enters the same way stream output can be generated because of this continuous queries. The next difference is that the DBMS system does not require real time requirements because the data is static and DSMS system requires huge amount of real time requirements because the data is generating continuously and it is important to process it continuously because the data might get lost in future. So now I hope that through this difference, you guys must have got an overview of the data stream management system. Now, here we'll be looking into the working or the architecture of the data stream management system. So as you know, the data stream management system deals with streaming data. So here the data will be in the form of streams and note one thing that the data stream will be not only from a single source, it can be from different sources. The data stream can include numbers, characters or binary numbers and so on. It may be of any type and note one thing that this streaming data will enter with respect to time. So these are the streams that are entering into the stream processor, which is the next component inside the working architecture of the data stream management system. So here, as you can see that the stream processor will process this stream and will generate some output. Now this output will be generated based on the queries. So here we have two types of queries that is standing queries and ad hoc queries. So now we'll be looking into these two queries in detail first and then we'll come back to this working architecture. So as you know that the stream queries in data stream management system are of two types. 
This topic is very much important when it comes to data stream management system. So let's see the first type which is standing queries. So what is the standing queries? You can see that queries that are asked to the stream at all the time. That is continuously these queries are getting asked to the entire stream that is entering into the stream processor. These standing queries are going to be asked once and this is going to be applicable for the entire stream that is entering that means continuous output stream will be generated because of this one single standing query for example if i ask the stream processor with this query and the query says that alert me whenever the electric current value exceeds 50 amperes so now according to this query whatever stream is entering the current element will be checked if it is greater than 50 ampere then an alert will be generated to me so you can see through this single query continuous output streams will be generated. I hope it is clear. The next type of query is ad hoc queries. So these are the queries that are asked a single time to the stream and a single output will be generated. Note that these ad hoc queries are also known as snapshot queries. So you can just relate this with the database management system where you ask a query one single time to the system and in return the system will return you one single output. So something like that, this ad hoc queries works in data stream management system. So for an example, if I fire a query that what is the average of all the electric current values that are captured so far. So this is going to be a single time query. And whenever this query is fired, the entire elements that are captured so far will be added with each other and will be divided with the total count of all the elements that are entered into the stream processor till now and this is going to generate an average value of the entire stream that is captured so far. So this average output will be thrown to that ad hoc query. I hope you are understanding these two types of queries. Now let's come back to the DSMS working architecture. So here whenever an ad hoc query is going to be asked a single time it will be asked and a single time utilizing this entire stream an output will be generated and will be thrown to the source from where the ad hoc query was asked. Now the standing queries will be stored in a particular container and since these queries are going to be continuously asked to the stream that is entering hence the output for this will be also continuous and hence continuous output streams will be thrown out of that standing queries. So up till now I think it is clear what are the different rules of these two queries and how it acts with the streaming data. So these are the two types of stream queries. I hope it is clear. Now let's move on to another section which is the archival storage. Now this comes out of the stream processor. So whatever stream is entering in the stream processor the stream is going to be stored in the archival storage. Now note one thing that all these streams will not be stored it will be dependent on the configurations and specifications of the system that the user is using and based on that the streams will be stored in this archival storage but still this archival storage is going to be very much massive that no other operations can be performed on this particular archival storage rather than just storing the streams that are entering into the system so i hope this use of archival storage is clear to you all now next section is the limited working storage now you know that storing the entire streams is very much costlier and it requires high computational resources. So to overcome this particular problem, instead of storing the entire streams, the knowledge or the summary of the entire stream that is extracted so far will be stored in this particular limited working storage. So this is going to store the knowledge of the entire streams and this knowledge will be further used to answer the queries which will be fired in future. So I hope the entire working and the architecture of DSMS system is clear to you all. If you have any doubts you can post it in the comment section. Now next we'll be looking into the key issues in stream processing. So whatever data stream that are entering into the system we'll be looking what are the different challenges that are faced by the data stream management system for processing the streaming data. So first is the continuous queries. This is the major issue that has been observed. Now because of the continuously firing of the queries, the real time output should be generated. For generating this, it requires huge computational resources which are expensive and costlier. So this is one of the drawback. Next drawback is the 
complex queries. Now, even if the query is not continuous, if a complex query is asked, since the data is streaming and continuously it is generating, so whenever a query is fired, the processing has to be so fast. Now, because of this fast processing, if the complex query is asked, then it might take more time. And because of this more time consumption in answering a particular query, some of the streaming data might get ignored. So this is one of the drawback. Next is the space and time constraints. Yes, the streaming data is obviously huge in volume and it is going to continuously increase as the time goes. So because of this, the issues with space and time constraints arises. Next key issue is the approximate query answering. As you know, we cannot store the entire streaming data. Only the summary and the knowledge can be stored for this entire streaming data. So because the summary and knowledge is stored, whatever query will be fired, the knowledge or the summary data will be used for answering that query. Hence, the exact answer is not possible for that particular situation. And therefore, approximated value or output will be shown in output streams. So I hope this key issue is clear. Now the next key issue is again the unbounded memory requirements. We, as we already have seen how massive the streaming data is and how big computational resources it will require for generating a real time response. So because of this there are some memory issues that can arise because of the limited constraint. So I hope the key issues of stream processing in data stream management system is also clear to you all. You can share your suggestions and reviews for this particular video in the comment section. And for more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.